Hello everyone, it's me, Josh, and today I did what I said I was going to do yesterday, but not even because I was originally planning just to take some unit tests and cover moderator actions because there was an issue with the moderator actions and there still might be, I haven't actually tackled that yet, but the complaint was that board owners couldn't delete posts when they should obviously be able to delete posts. So my ambition was to cover moderator actions with unit tests and automate the testing of moderator actions to make sure the default permission sets work as expected. I got into it, I started to cover it, and I started getting unexpected difficulties with testing this part of the application, and I decided that I had done it wrong. Uh, this was one, moderator actions, post delete, band delete, that kind of stuff was one of the first things that I added to Infinity Next when I started on the project in mid-2015. And since then, my understanding of the, the Laravel framework has grown significantly. So my old habit of just sh shoving everything possible into the controller, which is the first part of the application that handles a request, um, is no longer how I do things, thankfully. So I was talking about WebSockets yesterday, and I was talking about how... And when a post is created, it gets handed off to a job, which then fires events. And those events fire, or broadcast rather, um, thing WebSocket events that the client can receive. But jobs don't always have to be for that purpose. They can be used for other things. Primarily, jobs are used when you have a big part of the code a time-consuming, a, a computationally expensive element that the user really, really doesn't need to wait on. Because the way that a website works is what's called a request cycle. You submit your information, the backend receives the information, the backend processes the information, the backend sends a response. That's the request cycle. Um, and the way that traditionally it works is that when you submit your request, the page will wait until... Uh, it has finished anything that it's doing before sending a response. And this is less than ideal if you're doing something that's computationally expensive. If it would take a person five minutes to load a page, uh, you're doing something wrong. And I, I've worked on I've worked on enterprise level software that I was paid professionally to do and that other people were paid professionally to do, where they will do ridiculous things like, have massive million row Excel sheets be generated in a single request cycle. So if you reload your page at any point waiting for this document, it, sh it shits itself and it doesn't give it to you. You have to wait again. Um, in this instance, what I want to do is instead of having a big controller that handles, and I'll, I'll show you this. Uh, if I go to this and I show you this drop down, it, it has every possible action that you could take. And then, and that's me configuring permission stuff because um, I, I discovered that building this action menu with permission checks live is untenable because uh, if you have a post, if you have a thread with 750 posts and you have to check permissions 20 times per post, you have thousands of checks every time you load that page. Um, so it's easier to just re redo this menu so that uh, it, it's always the same and then maybe use something like CSS or JavaScript to hide things that the user doesn't have access to um, while making sure that the backend authentication is, is appropriate. So previously you had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different buttons for things you could do to a post if you had all the permissions. And what you would get by clicking one of these links is a confirmation page that looks like this. Delete a post from test, confirm action. Ban a user from test, confirm action. There was like a, a different page that was generated every time you click this button. Now, after all my changes, we go to this menu. Uh, these actions are still needing to be tidied up a bit. But all those other ones have been convinced, condensed to, to moderate. And you click moderate, what you get is this form. And this form is now a hub for all the permutations of moderator actions that you can fill out in the form. So let's delete this horribly offensive post. 
Uh, the way that it works is that there are three different types of post retention. You can either keep the post, delete the post, or delete all posts by this IP. That action is not available if you do not have an IP address on the post. It just doesn't show up. Uh, similarly, if you don't have an IP address on the post or if the post is from Tor, the band detail details don't show up. If you want to apply a band, you click the band button. And the reason why that checkbox is there, instead of just checking to see if you filled out any of the details, is that you can add a warning without filling out any information, right? So a zero minute ban is still a warning. You can, once the person sees that that warning, uh, then you can start posting it. And it's like on 4chan, if you get warned on 4chan, you get redirected to the ban page. The ban page is marked as seen, you, you can deliver a message there, and then uh, they can go right back to posting without waiting. But for right now, let's just do a delete, and the action scope decides how much of the site this applies to. And uh, I'm left that kind of open-ended because I have an idea of in the future, maybe when it comes to moderating, let people ban users across different boards that they that they own all at once. I'm, I'm thinking about it, and I didn't want to devote too much time to it right now. So I'm just um, I just have the board the post is on, and also site-wide if you have access to that. So if you have uh, global permissions, you also have site-wide. But for now, right now. Uh, we'll just do test. This doesn't matter. It only matters if you're applying a ban or delete all. So delete all site wide doesn't, or delete site wide does not matter. Um, just a weird caveat of of building this form. Anyways, uh, let's delete. You can form the action, and you'll be shocked and appalled at my shitty PHP Pro programming, because the e post is clearly there, defiant against my wishes to delete it. But that is because that has been passed off to a job. And that's the post moderation job right there. We can inspect it using this very awesome telescope shit that Laravel has, which I really, really am enjoy enjoying. Uh, it shows all the queries that fired as a result of the job. And again, this is asynchronous. It fires the job and then it shuts down the response. The response is redirecting you to that thread. Well, the post is still there because it has to wait before it gets deleted. Um, it's already been deleted, and you can see, here we go, all the stuff that's happened, it created, it updated a post, and I think that's because, I'm trying to think of what it would update, probably if it was deleted, yeah, it has to set, is deleted, is true, and uh, then the action, I don't know, I'll have to look at that, because it shouldn't be updating all those different, oh, it's probably the thread itself, the thread update uh, to remove a reply from the tallies and stuff, anyways, it deletes the post, updates the OP, and creates a log, and I'll show you that in a second. And these are the other events it fires. Uh, post was modified, post was deleted, post or moderated, and that's a plural, because when you delete all, I, di I didn't want to fire a, um, or rather, I didn't want to fire, all that does is create a log event. Um, I, I originally had logs on each post, but then if you delete 10 posts, you get 10 different log events. So instead, the post plural or moderated is a way to handle a collection of posts and creating a consolidated uh, response in the logs. Uh, but now if I go back and I refresh, the e-post has been annihilated. And if I go to the logs, ta-da, deleted post 256, that was a response to 255. And I have, uh, as you can see, bands are there. And interestingly, uh, I can show you that the IP does, in fact, uh, censor itself and become a hash so that regular people can still look at the logs but they won't get the IP addresses. Uh, so now we can go for a ban. Banning is not as, as I'd want it to be right now because um, it should kick you back to the ban page if you're banned and you try to post but it doesn't right now so I can do whatever. I can ban. Oh, and it should also leave a message to say you know, user was banned for this post, and it doesn't. So I'm still working on this. There's there's lots of little details. Because I've, I've been, when I upgraded the, the software to the new versions, I just kind of uprooted everything. I said, fuck it. I'm not going to commit to mistakes, right? I'm going to just do what it takes to modernize to the new version of Laravel and to start getting things on the right tools instead of just having it wherever it is. But as a result, a lot of weird stuff that I had just kind of thrown in to different places no longer works, such as the band message. Then we can go back to, uh, and in particular because of the cache. That's, that's probably what it's missing. I guarantee you it's a cache thing where uh, the post doesn't read cache once you ban. I wonder if I edit it.
I can't have undefined barrel. Oh, fuck it. I'll fix that next. I got shit to do. Anyway. I think this is the job for the ban. Ban was created. That's correct. Because when it, it, if you save the model, automatically fires an event which does stuff like add to the, the, the log. Which is what I want. And I should be able to see that in the logs. Ban says for reason whatever. For, for one second. Oh no. That's <laughs> actually it says one second before. That's because of how the, uh, <laughs> guess how the code works. I can just change that. And then if I try to post, this action is unauthorized. The action is unauthorized because I go to my band, get this nice band page, and has expired. I really should, uh, it should kick you back. I wonder if that, I hope that's marked. Can I go and post now? No. That's, that's the issue. And it doesn't lift until you see it and it doesn't throw you to the band page so you never see it. Gotta, gotta fix that. But I, I was working primarily on restructuring all this stuff so that getting the weird little stuff like redirects you to the band page. It has, it has to be seen in order to let you post. Um, adding the user was banned for this this post message to after after a ban is committed. That kind of stuff is the whole point of the restructuring and making it so that banning is is easier and that unit testing is easier. I'm curious. I've not actually done this yet. So if I look like a fool, I look like a fool. Oh, is it going to 404 if I refresh? Hey, it worked. My hypothesis was correct. What a joyous day for, for Infinity Next. Anyways, um, not very impressive, I guess, to users because it's just a, <laughs> just a decline of, of functionality. But it's more about the theory uh, for moving forward. Because things I want to add after this is uh, the WebSocket stuff doesn't broadcast changes yet. Uh, they didn't really broadcast new posts. So edits and bans and shit have to have to have an upstream where they broadcast those changes to people listening to threads. Uh, that kind of stuff. Ephemerality, bump locking, cyclical posts. That's all that's all gonna tie into this. Cause there's so many there are so many actions related to the post. There's so many things that happen and then happen as a result. And when you're just trying to plug all that logic into one place and you're trying to keep track of it because different changes happen in different parts of the code with different different authorizations and all this other shit. It really helps to have observers, jobs, queues, because then a post gets deleted and then the appropriate things happen. A post gets moderated and appropriate things happen. If a user gets banned, appropriate things happen. That's the that's the whole point of all the work. It took me a long time to do uh, to get to the point where the the queues are firing because it's extremely finicky code and. Uh, it didn't age well, so uh, a little bit stressful, and I'm not happy that uh, it took so long. But I'm gonna add, I'm gonna f committing to it. I'm gonna add fucking unit tests. I'm gonna show people what a unit test looks like because nobody nobody I don't think anyone listening cares or knows. But I I, I need to I need to show it because uh, I wanna I wanna commit myself to making more unit tests because they're important. Because then I can just pull up the console and type in PHP unit, press enter. And then every page of the site gets tested automatically. And I don't have to flip around or bump into errors or have people report shit back to me because the unit test will be looking for everything. But, uh, yeah, as far as today and yesterday go, that's, that's what I got. <laughs>